adding dynamic host configuration protocol to the GNS3 landscape. Let's begin. Our objectives in this micro nugget are really simple. It's how to automate the process of moving virtual machines around and not having to reassign IP addresses every single time. See, typically, if we had an XP machine, a virtual machine, that we we're gonna logically connect into our network, if we connected it over here logically, we then have to give it an IP address. So if this is dot one, this is the 10 network, maybe that's 10.0.0.51. And then later, if we move that same virtual machine over to this part of our network for other testing, we'd have to readdress it. Now it may be 192.168.1.51 or whatever address you want to use. We'd also specify a default gateway. The benefit of using DHCP by making R1 and R2 DHCP servers then we can plug that XP client virtually in anywhere we want to and dynamically can get an IP address that can save us a bunch of time. The objectives in this video, besides identifying the benefits of DHCP, which we've just done, is to implement it and test it. So let's go take a look at R1 and R2. And on those routers, we'll add the feature of having them also be, instead of just routers, also have them act as DHCP servers. On router one, let's just verify this is the right router. That'd be a good start. And it looks like it is. Okay, he's got the 10.0.0 network directly connected right here. So let's go ahead and configure this guy to be a DHCP server. It's really simple. We're gonna create a pool. You name it, whatever you'd like. We specify the network address space where he's gonna hand out IP addresses from. We can hand out a default gateway for our clients to use, a DNS server for our clients to use, and then also exclude any addresses that we don't want advertised from that 10 network. So maybe the first 10 IP addresses we're gonna reserve for static assignment for things like routers and servers and printers and so forth. On R2, which we also wanna make sure that's the right device before we implement DHCP, and it is, we're gonna create a pool, I'm gonna call it the 192 pool. We're gonna hand out IP addresses on the 192.168.1 subnet. Specify the default router as the IP address on R2. It will also exclude the first 10 addresses from that network range so it won't hand out the first 10. That means the first valid address should be something around 11. In GNS3, which is the front end for Dynamips, this cloud is representing that virtual XP computer. And let's go ahead and connect it right here. And to do so, it's really simple. We have this tool up here and I simply say, I want fast ethernet and I want to connect from this cloud. And that's the interface that leads towards that XP box to this switch and I'm done. So now that I have that physical connection in place, this PC logically is sitting on the 10 network. On this virtual XP host that we're gonna integrate, let's make sure we, that the interface is currently turned off. We'll do an IP config. So it's got no active interfaces. Let's bring up its interface. I'm gonna right click, simply enable it. And now that the interface is enabled, it should be sending out a DHCP discover, getting an offer message, requesting it, and hopefully there's an acknowledgement so that we can now have an IP address on this 10.0.0 subnet. To see if we've got an IP address already, we can just simply do the same command again, IP config, and sure enough, we've got an IP address, we've got a default gateway, and we should be able to ping all the way through the network. So 2222 happens to be a loopback address up on R2. That's fantastic. So now let's take a look at moving this machine over to the other subnet. To do that, I'm simply gonna remove that connection and make a new connection for this cloud over to the other side. So now with this new connection in place, let's go back to that same XP virtual machine and we'll disable, probably the fastest way to do this is disable the interface for a moment. Give it a chance to think about that, bring it back up. And now it's gonna be doing the DHCP discovers again and let's take a look at it. So now with an IP config one more time, now it has an IP address of 192.168.1.11 and we should be able to ping all the way to the other side of the network where R1 is to verify our basic connectivity. In this micro nugget, we've identified that DHCP has its benefits in a smaller network as well as larger ones. We implemented DHCP on two Cisco routers and we verified that an XP virtual machine when connected to one side of the network correctly got an IP address and when we moved it to the other side, it appropriately got an IP address from the other DHCP server. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.